Yo, yo, hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here again as usual. Thanks for dropping by for yet another chess video. It's always great to see you guys. So right before me, I've got the Chestnut Pro on one side, the Chestnut Evo on the other side, two very excellent boards in so many different ways. I've had a chance to test and play with them extensively. All that having been said, today's video, I am actually not gonna be talking about these boards as much as just using these boards to show you guys some very cool things that I found that you can do with these boards. Some very, very cool things. So be sure to stay tuned for that part because I feel like a lot of my viewers are really gonna benefit from from seeing how I'm using these boards uh, in, in a way that I feel like more people would wanna use that. But the topic of this video is gonna be more about finding helpful ways for you guys to get a better understanding of chess. Because I wanna create helpful advice to those of you guys out there, not only in showing you guys different chess sets, but also, also bringing you guys some really helpful advice to, to improve your chess game. And that is what this video is gonna be about. Before I get started, however, I wanted to take a minute of your time and say that recently there's been an increased interest in some of my videos and a lot more people have been subscribing recently. I'm really, really happy about that. I'm like over the top ecstatic, seeing that there's more people out there that are eager to, to subscribe. So if you haven't done so already, please, by all means, stop the video, subscribe. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that keep coming back and watching more of my videos. So if you find yourself one of the people that recurrently come back and, and watch my videos, please be sure to, to subscribe. Show your appreciation also by hitting the like if you can, maybe comment. I know some people comment, other people don't. People just watch and then leave. But those little tiny things really help to make these videos a little bit more visible. Recently, I think at the beginning of the year, the YouTube has changed their algorithm a little bit. So it's now becoming more and more difficult for small channels like this to be seen. Um, and it's becoming more and more difficult for me to be able to to provide more benefit to more people out there. Find ways to share my videos. You can share it with others. If you have other like-minded people in your world who would benefit from, from learning or seeing some of these chess sets or some of my advice in general, be sure to let them know, hey, there's Alex with Alsu Chess. Go check out his channel. If you could like the video, that really helps a lot too. If you're looking to improve your chess game, how do you go about trying to improve your chess game? Well, if you're like me, I would say that the number one way I try to go about it is I just, I go online on chess.com, lead chess. I use some of these boards here. I play against either the AI or I, I just, I don't even bother watching videos that much. I just kind of, that's my understanding. If I want to get better at chess, I just play more chess. But the reality of the situation is that's kind of an ignorant way of looking at it, uh, to be honest with you, because that kind of shows you that I'm stubborn. I say, I'm not watching videos, I'm not learning openings, I'll just kind of learn them as I play. That's, that's how I've always been. I've been very sort of resistant to other people's advice. And that can be very limiting. It can be limiting because you know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. And then as a result, you basically don't know about a bunch of stuff and you think you'll just learn it as you go, but sometimes you don't and then your chess score doesn't improve. So as a result, I would say, the, one of the great ways to learn how to play chess is watching videos online like, for example, Gotham Chess or some of the other chess players that you guys like to watch, whether it's on Twitch, whether it's on YouTube or any of the other social media websites. But it's a passive way and nobody is asking you to do anything. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, okay, you have... A room where you come in once a week, twice a week or whatever, you sit down with an actual chess coach that has a broad understanding of chess and also has many, many years of teaching people like you and he breaks things down and you start to play your game with him and then he breaks it down point by point and say, these were the blunders, these were the inaccuracies, this is where you didn't think the way you probably should have thought, this is what you need to do. And they sit down for like an hour or two hours with you and they break things down and then at the very end they'll say, okay, well, these are the mistakes you did, this is what I would like for you to work on for the uh, duration of the week. These are the practical examples. I'm gonna send you some stuff, I'm gonna send you some games, I want you to learn them, I'm gonna have you practice the king's opening, I'm gonna have you practice the queen's gambit, this and that. By the time we come reconvene next week, I need you to learn these things. That's a completely different way of learning chess because that is a way that requires a lot of attentiveness. It's much different than the other side of the spectrum where we're passively watching videos, okay? However, passively watching YouTube videos is free most of the time. 
On the other side of the spectrum, hiring a coach like that, especially if it's a one-on-one -on -one teaching, can be expensive. Uh, in the United States, uh, coaching can, be, can run you somewhere between $50 an hour to all the way up to, they claim, $500 an hour, which is, that's crazy, $500 an hour. But like even $50 an hour, after so many hours of coaching, can really start to add up. And depending on whether or not you're being sponsored or being financed by somebody else, whether it's a parent or guardian, or whether you're financing your own coaching, it can add up over time. So, so we have those two ends of the spectrum. However, we have other things from which we can learn. We can learn from books, which require more of our effort. If we pick up a, uh, pick up a book of how to win a chess by Levy Rosman, that's one of the ways you can, you can sort of self-train yourself. It's not as effective as having a coach, but it is more effective than passively watching YouTube videos. But is there anything in between? Yes, there is. We have Chesley, and that's one of the reasons why I, I kind of brought out the Chestnut Evo, because I wanted to say that for anybody that's looking to get some training, solid training, and are looking for some tangible real ways to learn and improve their game, Chesley now comes embedded into the Chestnut Evo. We've seen this when I reviewed the Chestnut Evo before. It now becomes part of the board, and it's really easy to sign up it's free to sign up to Chesley and it's this whole realm, if you're not aware of what Chesley is, it's this whole realm of where um, people actually upload specific instruction specific books and video lessons on um, certain openings and, and the Chestnut Evo works really, really well in being able to allow you to utilize the actual board here with all the light up LEDs and everything. While you're going through the lessons of Chesley, it's really very cool, simple way to go through some of those lessons. So Chesley is one of the websites that definitely would be helpful to some people out there that are looking to up their game. However, one of the things about Chesley is that it can get expensive, okay? So if you are not familiar with Chesley, sometimes you can buy a course on a specific opening. And that specific opening course might run you somewhere like $300 just for one, one opening. Yes, they'll go deep into the understanding of it, but it's gonna be like $300, that's, that's quite a lot of money. And if you're looking to understand several different things or several different nuances, you might end up spending easily, you know, quite a lot of money. So now you could ask me right now at this point, Ah, uh, Chesley, you know, yeah, you might not even be aware of it. And if you spend most of your time just watching people play chess and you're like, well, that's a great way for me to be able to learn. One of the things I have to say is that people that post on Twitch or people that uh, put videos on YouTube, a lot of it is superficial. A lot of it is like very, very sort of we're skimming the surface because for the simple fact that YouTube is being watched by people with more or less, there's way too many people with a very sort of rudimentary knowledge of chess that come. And so for a YouTuber like Gotham Chess, for example, what makes more sense for him as far as views, you know, he knows that if he makes a video how to play chess or describing a very sort of a rudimentary understanding, a very simple idea, maybe a certain opening, maybe a certain this, or showing you guys the fool's mate, or showing how do we checkmate somebody as quick as possible, he's going to attract millions of viewers because millions of viewers are looking for that particular topic. How do we checkmate as quick as possible? You know, if he starts talking about a very difficult idea to understand, an idea on a grandmaster level, and really trying to dissect a specific position, he's gonna get like, 10,000, 20,000 views because suddenly the, the information that's provided is on a much, much sort of a deeper level. And although it could be beneficial to those 10, 20,000, you know, advanced players, Gotham Chess will not benefit from it a lot. So he doesn't. So he doesn't make those videos or at least he doesn't delve very deep. I'm not just talking about Gotham Chess, I'm, I'm saying him as an example of, you know, any YouTuber, he might actually give us excellent information, but that is the idea of YouTube. That is the idea of social media is because there's so many people out there and we want to be able to attract 
as many people as possible, we're going to present with rudimentary ideas because those rudimentary ideas are going to be ideas that everybody can understand. Okay. So the, the difference between YouTube is and Chesley, for example, is that on Chesley, you're going to get a deeper understanding of a specific position. That's what you're paying the money for. That's why you're paying the $300 is that so you can learn that specific variation on a much deeper level by people who actually have played it by people who have a lot of experience. Okay. Don't forget that unlike you, me, people that have some degree of, you know, chess proficiency, the people with a level of 2,500 and above has spent many, many, many years learning this stuff and have gained a very deep understanding and watching, you know, uh, Gary Kasparov talk about, you know, some of the positions on a paid course is going to be a lot different than you guys watching me watch, you know, play through my game. So that's important to understand too. If you're looking to get, get some kind of a deeper understanding, certainly. And if you happen to have the chestnut Evo board, which I would definitely recommend if you're considering, you know, having these courses, um, Chesley might be your, your route. However, back to what I was talking about, uh, we feel like, okay, so how, how do I get better at chess? Well, I, I want to get better at chess. So I'm going to just go to Chessly. I'm going to start picking up different courses. Maybe I'll pick up a couple of openings. Maybe I'll pick up a book on, on tactics. Maybe I'll get a, a book on strategy, but they're written by different authors. A lot of times different authors have different ways of, of talking about, well, no, you should do it this way. But the other author might be like, well, no, you know, you should do it that particular way. And so then you can get confused because you'll get a lot of different opinions coming from different directions. And all of a sudden you're like, well, one person says I should go ahead and play with the D4. The other one says, no, don't I play with the D4, play with the E4. This person is saying, no, you should avoid those two altogether and just do something completely different. So I've done that before. I've, I've done, I've picked up a bunch of stuff that gets you more confused than anything. It doesn't improve your chess skill. Okay. So yes, there's internet and yes, we live in the age where we personally believe that we can get anything we want from online. We, we want an answer to something, just Google it, you know, but that's different from if, if I took a course, which I did at some point, a course on fixed prosthodontics, because I went to dental school at some point, there's this course right over here, this thick book that probably costs some 150 or $200 because these books are very expensive, uh, talks about everything you need for fixed prosthodontics, talks about certain angles and retention, talks everything written by several different authors collaborated together start to finish it'll provide you with a comprehensive understanding of fundamentals of fixed prosthodontics you know if i was out there and i had a question about fixed prosthodontics you bet i'm going to pick this book up and i'm going to find the answer there and if i don't find it i'll, I'll look up somewhere else but i'm not just going to willy-nilly go online and try to Google like, oh, I just have this answer, but I think that Google will help me. Google doesn't help a lot of times. And who writes those answers out there anyways? A lot of times those answers are not like, you'll ask a question, especially health questions that I oftentimes Google, and I'll get an answer and it's like, you know, who wrote this stuff? So you get a book, you invest, you pay $200, you get a start to finish with somebody from the start, from the very first page, that tells you they're going to teach you from start to finish everything you need to know about the fundamentals of process, fixed prosthodontics. So by the time you're completed with this book, you're ready for that particular part. And so what I'm looking for is not necessarily bits and pieces here and there to improve my chest skill. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for an entire course by somebody that's better rated than me. Let's say instead of, you know, 14, 1500, I want a course by made somebody by with a level of 2400, for example. So that's kind of where we're going to, because I've recently been able to communicate with an international master, Yevgeny Yelisev, who has uh, his own YouTube channel with uh, 9,000 subscribers called The Journey to Grandmaster. I'm gonna leave you guys a link below here. A really nice guy with a very, very solid understanding of chess, rated close to 2,500, who basically is on his journey 
to become a grandmaster. He has taken a lot of time out of his very busy life to uh, create a comprehensive online video course with filled with instructions called the 10 day opening mastery by Yevgeny Yelisev. I'm going to leave you guys a link below to that particular course. Now that course he has specifically created just like this book with an intention from start to finish of improving your chess skill. He's not just putting in videos there like other people put video, like I put videos uh, willy nilly. He's not putting videos there in haphazard random fashion. All the videos that he has created on that course from start to finish build one on, on top of another in such a way that he says, okay, well, we'll start with this after you've went through this particular video course and taking these lessons and practical practices, practice quizzes and stuff. I will subsequently now build up on top of that knowledge with this next and next and next. He has created this 10 day course that is meant for you to basically from start to finish improve your chess game. That is the difference between somebody just randomly posting to get more views on YouTube and somebody who's actually spending many, many, many hours creating a comprehensive course. Now his course is currently retailing for, I believe, uh, somewhere in the price range of $100. The course will take you from start to finish through an understanding of his thought process of how he believes that you can improve your chess game. And when an international master with a chess rating of close to 2,500, who is himself trying to achieve grandmaster level, is creating a course, you bet that it will be helpful. You bet that he's not just randomly going to teach you random things or trying to basically fill the website with videos that is just there so that you can pay for the course. His intention is that in 10 days, if you watch his course, which is broken down into many different videos, if you watch his course, you're going to get a much deeper understanding of the game. You're going to get a much deeper understanding of the thought process behind how he makes certain moves, about how he makes certain decisions in his games. And even he was saying that had he had this type of course, 10 years ago when he was trying to improve his chess score, he would have improved substantially quicker than he has, you know, it has taken him to get to the level where he is. So he has made something which he feels like is going to be really helpful to a lot of people. Let me just go ahead and jump in and I'm going to actually show you this course online here on the computer. Once you sign up for the course, you'll be taken to this main page right over here. This page is uh, part of sort of the discussion board that's been created by the author Yevgeny Yelisev. And one of the nice things that I find um, about this particular sort of arrangement is that you you can actually type questions here and Yevgeny takes the time to answer these questions. So if you have any particular questions with regards to the course, if you want to, to sort of have him look at certain ideas, you can post. There's some people that have actually posted either games or puzzles for um, everybody's sake and also for Yevgeny to take a look. Uh, so that's really helpful. You get you get sort of a direct communication with with the author. Um, that's really really neat to see. Um, in here you get you get the the ten day opening mastery course. And if we click on that, um, it's sort of broken down. You have this section right over here which talks about uh, sort of the prelude. He talks a little bit about his story and how he came about to play chess and increase his rating. Then subsequently there's a video on the must watch. He basically tells you how you should watch these videos and what you should need to be doing. Talks a little bit about the include the PGN file that you can also purchase separately. Now there is a PGN file with all the games and all the different instructions that he goes through here. You can actually purchase a PGN file separately. Um, I think the PGN file is an additional cost of I, I think $39, but um, with my particular opening, I do have the PGN file. Um, it will come as a zip file that you'll just unzip, and then and then one of the cool things is that if you do have, if you do have, for example, a board uh, like the the Chestnut Pro or maybe the iChess One or the Chestnut Air that you can Bluetooth connect to your computer, for example. One of the things that I found, and I'll show you guys that here in just a second. One of the things that I found is if you do connect your, for example, Chestnut Pro to 
the Bluetooth connection and then you run it through Fritz, you can actually load all the PGN files and all the games from his particular, from his particular website. And then you can use Fritz to actually analyze each individual game and not only analyze it. One of the fascinating things that I found that you can do is that as you're analyzing the game in Fritz, let's, let's say for example here in one of, the, one of the lessons, he talks about some of the ideas of continuous attack and development from the ever so famous Immortal Game by Paul Morphy. And so he talks about the Immortal Game and one of the things you can do is you can actually play through the Immortal game in the analysis on Fritz using a tangible board, kind of like the Chestnut Pro. And at any particular point, for example, as you're going through the game, you can choose to deviate from any particular position. So let's say you're studying a game and you want sort of to see if there's any alternatives. One of the things that I was able to do is at any point, I can move my piece to another direction. I can say, well, what if I wanted to do it that way? What if I wanted to, to, to see where this particular line is going to take me? What Fritz is able to do in that particular situation, it'll create a sub, sort of a subsection um, that will kind of break down and it will say, okay, well, here's a su subsequent line that you're trying to create and you can continue analyzing your game from that point, whether or not it's with the AI or by yourself. And it will, as you're moving the pieces around the board, it will draw that continuation for you and then you can save that as sort of a subsequent its own PGN file and maybe even have the ability to send it back into the course for Evgeny to take a look and say, Evgeny, what do you think about this particular deviation? What do you think about this particular alternative? You can always do that if it makes sense, not only with the Immortal game, but any of the other games that he's presenting. It's just another way for you to gain a deeper understanding of chess. And I find that using a tangible board like the Chestnut Pro or the iChess One, iChestnut Air is an excellent way of doing it because you, you have everything you need to get better at chess right in front of you, right in front of your own hands. So let's get back to this real quick. So you have the PGN file that you can buy separately or you can buy these as a combination. Um, but if you do have the PGN file, all you have to do is upload it and then you can essentially plug this particular PGN file in any of the, um, in Shredder, you can plug it into Fritz, you can plug it into Chessbase, any of the different ways that you want to do it, you can load it and he shows you how to load the PGN file into Lee Chess, analyze it there. If you don't have any specific program, you can do it that way. Uh, not everybody's going to need a PGN file, not everybody's going to need to have that to get a better understanding, but people on a, a little bit of a higher level of chess understanding might actually be able to gain a lot more from having a PGN file than just watching the videos. But for the most of us, the 10 day mastery course, the video section of it is in fact very comprehensive. If we go down here, we'll see it say that the very first part is this welcome section. We talk about the PGN files, talk about how you can use this website. And then as we go down right over here, we have the first day right, right over here. And the first day is sort of broken down into a couple of tutorial videos. And you know, let's go ahead and click on the first one here. Place for us to support our attack. Afterwards, we once again place our bishop, well, our second bishop to b2. That is the perfect place in all of the setups we are going After you watch the videos, each of which is approximately maybe 10 to 15 minutes long, they're not super long, but they're made in such a way that he takes away all the extraneous information that we might not need, such as he would do really well at editing my videos, I feel like, because he would take away all the stuff we don't need, but I tend to leave it in for you guys. Uh, but then as you watch these videos and you start to gain an understanding of how he moves, what kind of openings he recommends, either for white or for black, then you go through the practical sections. And when you, we go through the practical tests, a lot of times uh, we jump right into Lee Chess, as we see right over here. And then uh, we can actually, he has created this section for us too. We read what he wants us to do, whether it's to find a certain move based on what he was talking about. So to help sort of drive home some of the ideas and so that, you know, you're paying attention while you're actually watching the videos, because now, because there's these sections here, you're actually going to be more attentive to, to watch the videos, kind of like what we had quizzes in, in school is if we, there was no quizzes, everybody sits there half asleep. If we know there's a quiz at the end of the class, based on what we've heard, then 
you know, we have to pay attention. So kind of like that. And, and I find that this is also a really good way of, because there's at the bottom, some people will actually comment, collaborate and questions will be asked. He uh, answers the questions. So that's really, really cool. You basically uh, look at the videos, you learn, you understand, you practice. And then furthermore, you can use the PGN files to get a better understanding of the things that he talks about, to get a better idea and, and more learning will, of course, you'll be able to obtain from, from taking an actual board, kind of like the Chestnut Pro, going through and playing some of these games. Like I said, if you're really looking to improve your chess game, it's going to be some of the best ways you can do it because, because his course is so comprehensive. Like I said, he created a course start to finish, starting off with an understanding that you have a certain knowledge of chess. And in fact, he, when I was talking to him on the Zoom meeting, he said that he has created his course for people that the most people that are going to be benefiting from this course are going to be people that are rated somewhere between 1000 ELO to 2000 ELO. However, people with a level of above 2000 ELO will also benefit as he said that there's people with 21, 2200 ELO that are likely also benefiting from this as he had some people that commented and said that they're, they're, they're finding these, these courses very, very instructive, very helpful in their preparation and in their all overall comprehensive understanding of chess. So if your level is under 1000 ELO, you could still benefit if you're, you know, level 800, for example, 700, you're going to get a solid understanding. If you, if you don't know how to move chess pieces, then of course, you know, then you'd probably want to get that particular um, knowledge before you come in and take this course. But like I said, this course is meant from start to finish with an intention of making your chess understanding better. He talks about some of the moves that, that he does and he, he talks about it in such a way that he wants you to learn. So I highly encourage you guys, I'm gonna leave a link to his website below. If you're not sure about the scores and you're still kind of undecided, uh, you can always take a look at some of the samples that he provides. There's also a seven day money back guarantee. So if you did sign up for the course, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it, and you don't like it for some reason, you can always, you can always request a refund within seven days. But I have to say, you get a lifetime me membership, essentially you get a lifetime uh, course for only a hundred bucks, which isn't much nowadays for, you know, you, you get the access to this for forever. So even though this course is intended the way that it's broken down, for you to break to to learn chess essentially in 10 days. So just like I was showing you guys before, we have the the day one, which is the foundation, which has nine lessons. Then the, the next category is day two, which is beat the King Indian defense part one. And we go through and there's a lot more practical lessons here because the information gets a little bit more dense and he really wants you to understand and not just watch the videos. That's the biggest part of what makes this different so much so than just passively watching YouTube videos. You could see so many more practical tests and the information becomes more and more difficult. At the end of each one of the section, he has this separate section where he talks about playing against the 2000 chess engine, where he talks about additional things and different things to consider. Uh, when you're playing the game. And like I said, every video is built on top of the other video. There's no extraneous information that you don't need, which is why I find his, his lessons really, really good. So basically the way that this course is, is he's intending for you to increase your chess understanding in only 10 days. Given that every single one of those 10 days, you're able to complete all the information and understand things, which may take you, you know, a couple of hours every day. And uh, you're going to get a better understanding of chess. Now, uh, like me, I'm a busy person. I might not get a chance to have so many hours every day. You can always take these at your own pace. So if it takes you half a year to go through this course or a year, that's fine too. As long as you feel like you're remembering things and you're able to build on that memory on, on that knowledge, then you can, you can definitely improve your game one way or another. And that's what me and him were talking about is, Initially, he thought this would be a great 10 day course, but you can rewatch them as many times as you want. You can come back to them as often as you'd like. And if you have questions, part of the way that this, this particular um, website is created with the, with the initial forum here, 
It's great, okay? It's great because you can ask any of those questions and in not only Yevgeny himself, but other people in the community could also chime in and help you, help you, you know, understand some of these things. Another thing that he is uh, also going to consider doing as part of this particular package is he's hoping to create these group lessons, which I believe he's already had group lessons, kind of like Zoom meeting group lessons where he could have a number, let's say like six or more uh, chess players that could sort of collaborate together create a zoom lesson kind of almost like a classroom which is which is essentially getting like a tutor in the same room with you and you could sit there and discuss certain openings and you know discuss certain positions and everything and get a sort of a better knowledge of that in real life which is really really cool that's probably the most sort of a uh, um, the closest that I've been able to get to like a, a real life tutor in this particular situation. So here's what he mentioned to me before. Uh, he said, I would also be happy to make a special offer for your audience by providing a free group lesson to the first 10 people buying the course using your link. Okay. So if you are interested in doing that, be sure to check out the link below. Uh, I feel like this is an excellent way of learning how to play chess. I feel like because because of its organized sort of uh, nature, because of the fact that he doesn't have any extraneous stuff, it's kind of like the book, okay? Everything you need to gain a better understanding in playing chess is going to be there, okay? He's going to talk about certain nuances, certain openings and certain ways in it that will help to drive home ideas from start to finish. Before I conclude this video, I wanted to take a moment to show you how I can take the PGN file from Evgeny's website and plug it into, in my case, it would be Fritz and show you how you can actually create these type of analysis situations where you can use a tangible board like this. Okay, so here we have the Chestnut Pro board with the premium Chestnut Pro wooden chess pieces. I've shown both the board and the pieces extensively in some of my other videos. And then on the board here, I have first and foremost, I have the chestnut driver preloaded using the Graham O'Neill's DLL file. Thank you, Graham O'Neill for providing us these files. And then what I did is I went to my courses for the journey to the Grandmaster and I clicked here for courses and I downloaded the PGN file, essentially all the games that he presents in this particular course. They come with a zip file and then you unzip it and extract the PGN file. Subsequently, I opened up Fritz. Uh, in my case, I think it's Fritz 18 Deep Fritz. And I opened up the, as you can see, all the different games that are present here. There's uh, like 45 or 46 different games. We're gonna start off by taking a look at the Paul Morphy's, the Mortal game right over here. and. And so what we do is essentially, as you can see here on the board, we can go through like this. What I'm doing is I'm essentially starting up here and then I'm going to make that particular. Um, we can um, essentially look at the way that the game develops. This really helps, at least for me, at least it helps me gain a much better understanding of these nuances of the game and how everything works. As you can see, everything works really flawlessly. As I'm using the computer, I'm just kind of going through, things light up in this case. This is the Immortal game, by the way. Um, and, but for example, in this situation, okay, it says that the next one would be uh, D4, X, E5. So they're saying that the next one is gonna be, we're gonna take, we're gonna take here, which, Sure, we can we can go ahead and do that. But as you can see here on the screen, what if what if instead of doing that, I wanted to test a different theory? And so what I would want to do, what if I went here instead? So as, as soon as we do that, right over here, as you can see, we start getting a different thread going. So if we do this particular thread, what if during that particular situation, he decided we're going to go ahead and do that, and then forced for take then we took back let's say with this maybe or not i'm just i'm just saying i'm just kind of give you guys an example and so what if we did that and then uh the opponent took where would that lead our our position here not so good because we just lost a pawn but maybe just maybe we're going to regain it back or at least we're going to get some some kind of a 
you know, you can you can do that here. You can do that. You can actually create subsequent threads. And and if you wanted to go back here, all you'd have to do is you'd have to. It says if you want to go back, as you can see right over here, um, we are gonna just go ahead and uh, yeah, I think we were right over here, and then we had the bishop over here, and then we had. So once you have the pieces placed back, you can just go back to the original one. And if you wanted to go from there, doing your own little line, you could at any point just continue with the way that the game is. So that's really, really cool. And once you're done with that part, like once you've actually uh, did your own little extra bits, what you could do is you can save that particular PGN file and export that game. And then if you wanted to, or if you had any additional questions, you can even write you could ask a question or whatever. You can do like, uh, you know, consider al uh, alternative line, and then you can put, you know, whatever line you want to do. You know, you know what I mean. And then you can put that, and and it'll save it. It'll save your explanation here or wherever you want to do. You know, you want to put your alternative route and then you can put your question or whatever you can you can have these type of analysis if you'd want to do it that way um, that is the cool part about utilizing a physical chessboard like this and a very very strong software as we can see here to really gain a much better understanding and then once you load this once you save this into like a pgn you can always go back and load your uh, PGN file to the main page here and say, well, what do you think about this particular arrangement? What do you think about this particular understanding? And Evgeny can take the time with his deep understanding of chess to sort of give you some advice and say, well, you know, I, I think this works better in this situation or that works better. It's always great to have somebody with such a high chess rating by your side and that's one of the little key sort of things that you get benefits by signing up for his course. Alrighty, so that's about it for this particular video. I did not mean to stretch it out that long, but I wanted to really show you some examples. How do I use these electronic boards like the Chestnut Pro, the iChess One, the Chestnut Air? How do I effectively use them on programs like Fritz and how you can do the same thing too, whether it's just your own games or analyzing other people's games, you can always do that. And I feel like it's the number one way that we can learn chess on a much deeper level and a number one way that we can improve. Um, if you're looking to improve your game, consider consider going down and checking out Evgeny Elisev's 10 day mastery course. It's uh, like I said, it's very effective. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I certainly have enjoyed making it because every time I make a video that I truly feel like it's going to be beneficial to at least some people out there that makes me makes me feel like it's all worth my time, you know, and even if it does take me a few extra minutes to really drive home some ideas and kind of show you how it all works, I'm very happy at the end. And so if you did enjoy this video, by all means, hit that like button. Alrighty, hopefully everybody stay safe, get to play more chess, learn more chess games, learn chess in general, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.